So what we're going to do tonight is talk about an image crawler case study. There's a, a variant of this in the synchronous lessons of the course, but I've done some improvements lately to add some new things. And so I want to kind of talk about it in the new and revised model. And we'll basically talk about how this image crawler case study applies a bunch of Java completable future framework features in order to be able to recursively crawl a hierarchical directory structure. And the first part of the lesson, which is this part, is going to focus on a portion of the image counter class, the fields it has, its constructor. There's a method called count images async and then a few associated methods that that particular uh, method calls. And we'll talk about that first. This particular example shows how you can use completable future features in order to asynchronously crawl a recursive directory hierarchy. So basically think of it like a web crawler or web spider. I wouldn't consider it a web scraper because it just goes ahead and crawls and, and counts stuff. It doesn't actually really record the content. And on the right-hand side, you can kind of see the recursively structured directory hierarchy where you have a root node and that root node can then have folders or images and the folders can contain subfolders and images as well. The program counts the number of images on each page. And you can see here, this is just an output from the program that we'll look at here shortly. It tells you certain things. It tells you what thread was doing the processing at a given point in time. It tells you what level of the recursion that we're at, starting at level one, which is the root, and then descending down. Each time we go down a level, we increment the depth count by one. And it basically says how many images it found as it's traversing through the hierarchy of folders. The root folder can either reside locally, it can be in the local file system of the device, or it can be accessed remotely, it can be web-based. And most of the program doesn't know, doesn't care whether the folder structure is local or remote. And I'll show you how we do that by some enhancements added to the JSOUP library, which is a library for parsing HTML documents. So the image counter class is the heart of this program. And as you can see here, it's got about a dozen methods or fields in it. And so that's where we're going to start taking a look at first, focusing initially on a subset of the total methods and constructors and fields. So this particular example is in the EX19 project in my Java 8 folder in my Live Lessons GitHub repository. So if you go to that link and you click on that, you'll find this particular example. And so let's start by just taking a look at the driver. The driver is super simple. It basically just has a comment saying that this program example will count the number of images in a recursively defined folder structure asynchronously using a bunch of features from Java's completable future framework. And then it's got a main entry point. It parses the command line arguments, if there are any provided. And then it makes a new image counter object that starts the ball rolling. So let's go take a look at image counter. So here's image counter. Uh, this is the class that does the bulk of the orchestration of the processing. And as I mentioned before, the root folder that's starting the crawl can either reside locally in the file system or remotely on the web. So we'll take a look at that and see how all this works. There's a couple of fields that are noteworthy here. One of them is quite interesting. You found this also in your assignments. This is a key set view field named M unique URIs. And it's set equal to a key set that comes from concurrent hash map. And so the concurrent hash map has a factory method called new key set, which makes a key set view, which is basically just a, a thread safe Q or thread safe set that has atomic check then, act, check then act operations. So we'll take a look at those check then act operations below. We use one of them that's uh, important. It also has another field that's called M0, which is a completable future, which is completed with the value zero. So every anytime we need to return the value zero, where we need a completable future, we just use M0 and it's already been completed ahead of time. So now let's go ahead and take a look at the image counter constructor. This is where everything starts to move, the wheels start to turn, as it were. And you can see here that the first thing we do is we get the root URI, which is something we get out of the options singleton, which is either a path URI into the local file system, or it's a root URL that will go to some link in the web, defaults to my web page. And uh, if we take a look, here's here's my default web page with a bunch of images and 
the default path URL here is a uh, just index.html. So that's that's just basically uh, showing how these things work. So let's pop back out of here. Once we figured out the starting point for our crawl, we're going to call a helper method that we'll look at in a moment called crawl images async. And that's going to, again, begin the recursive descent through the, the hierarchy of, of folders and files. It starts out with an initial depth count of one, and we'll see how that gets used in just a second. Now, let's just take it for granted that count images async works. It's going to return a completable future that will emit a count of the total number of images crawled at that level when uh, it completes successfully. If it fails, however, we're going to do something else. So it would fail if an exception was thrown. For example, we tried to crawl something that was not a valid link. So in that case, we use an exception completion stage method called handle, and this will handle the outcome of the previous stage. If you got an exception, if an exception was thrown, then that means the EX parameter was not null and we set total images to zero. If total images is not uh, null, that means we succeeded, in which case we have the count of the total number of images. So in that case, we're gonna go ahead and print it. And you can see here, it says, the total number of images reachable from the root URI is whatever comes back here. And then the final thing that we do here is we go ahead and call the join operation. This is the one and only call to join, and this will block until all the async completable future processing is done. So nowhere else in this program do we call join, and that's by design. By the way, here's another way to handle exceptions. We don't have to use the handle completion stage method, but instead we could use the exceptionally exception handling completion stage method and convert the exception to a zero. And then we could use the then accept completion stage method to print the results. And it's just another way to do things. I don't really have a particular preference either way. They, they both get you what you need, which is to handle exceptions or the, the normal processing in a consistent and sensible manner. And you'll see we have other places in the code that'll print what exceptions occur if something goes wrong. So let's now go ahead and run the program. So just to see what it does, uh, I'm running it first using the local file system, and I'll go show you where it's getting the data in just a second. You can see it tells what thread things are occurring in, the depth that stuff's occurring, and you can see that we uh, determine if we've exceeded the max depth. It says so. If we don't exceed the max depth, it tells how many images we found in each of the, the, the various HTML files or folders, and uh, it also keeps track of whether we've already processed an image. And the final thing it does is it tells us the total number of images that are reachable from the starting point. And we can change this. The, the initial uh, process just went through the local resources folder. You can see it. I put some images in various folders in the resources part of the program. But if I don't want to do that, all I need to do is just go over here and change dash L for local to dash W for web. And I can rerun the program. And what it'll do this time is it'll go out to my website and it will crawl my website, which has the same images that are on my, my local computer, just to be consistent. Actually, I take it back. There, there are different number of images here. So it's different number, but more or less the same. And so you can see it just gives a little bit different information because the, the path URI is a URL, in this case, not something into the local file system. Okay, so that's what happens when we run the program. Now let's go ahead and take a look at the count images async method. And this should also look a bit familiar to you because it's structured somewhat like some of your programming assignments. So you can see here that we use a stream factor method to make a one element stream that just contains the page URI. And then we go ahead and use the filter intermediate operation to ensure that the page URI doesn't exceed the max depth or has already been visited. And we do that by calling a little helper method called pass checks. And what pass checks does is it checks to see if the depth exceeds the max depth, which is something you can set on a command line, on the command line parameter list if you want. And if it does exceed the max depth, it says that you've exceeded the max depth and it returns false, which indicates that we're not going to, to continue to, to process things. And then the other thing it does is it goes ahead and it checks to see whether or not we've already visited this page URI. And this is pretty cool because it uses 
this atomic check then act method that's part of the key set view in our M unique URIs field. And the add method is carefully implemented by the Java infrastructure for the basically the Java concurrent hash map to efficiently yet atomically check to see if we've already seen this entry. And if we have not, it adds it. And if it has already been seen, it'll return false. And we don't have to worry about race conditions because that's protected from uh, any kind of synchronization woes or hazards by some clever locking. Once again, if we've already processed the URI, we just return false and don't continue any further. Otherwise, we return true. And what that means, of course, is that we can continue on. So we try to filter things out before we go much further. The next thing that we do is we call the map intermediate operation passing in the get start page method reference. And this method reference calls the get start page method. And this uses the completable future factor method supply async, which asynchronously gets the contents of the page. And you can see here what it does is it calls down into the options singleton and it calls a method called get page. And get page is part of a little helper class I called JSuper because it's going to soup up the JSoup class or JSoup framework to more effectively handle the uh, differences between crawling something that's local to the computer versus crawling something that's on the web. And for some odd reason, JSoup doesn't make that transparent. So you actually have to write some logic to, to manage that. So what I do here is I we call the get page method. This is a synchronous method. So we call it in the context of supply async. So it'll run asynchronously. And then we go ahead and check to see if we're doing a local crawl or a remote crawl. If we're doing a local crawl, we go ahead and figure out where the system resource uh, folder is. So we go ahead and get the URI of the system resource folder. And then we go ahead and will tell the JSoup parser to parse that particular file at, at that URI. So if we're doing things locally, we do some fancy footwork here to get rid of the stupidity of Java checked exceptions and turn them into runtime exceptions so they're cleaner to deal with. And we go ahead and apply this particular call, passing in the file that's associated with the root of the resources folder. So that's what we do for local processing. And you'll notice that there's a JSUP parse method that will take a file and parse it as an HTML document. If it's remote, in contrast, we have to do something different. It's a little bit annoying, but we just write a little wrapper class to hide this from the rest of the program. So if you're trying to parse a web page, JSUP has a connect method that will go ahead and establish a connection and then bring down that page. It'll get the contents of that HTML page. So we set ourselves up a little function to do this, to handle checked exceptions in a clean runtime exception set centric way. And then we go ahead and apply that function to download the HTML page. In, in either case, we end up with a document that comes back from get page. And because we called this in the supply async method, we get a completable future to the document that is then in the process of downloading. So what we get out of this call will be a single completable future to a document that's being downloaded. The next thing that we're going to do in the count images async method is chain that together with another intermediate stream call called map. And that's going to call sort of the main workhorse of this little image counter class called count images on page and page links async, which is a bit of a mouthful. What it's going to do is it's going to go ahead and asynchronously count the number of images on this page, if there are any. And then it'll also recursively crawl other hyperlinks that are accessible on this page and count their images asynchronously. And what's going to come back from that, of course, will be a completable future that will emit the total count for everything at that particular level when all the other asynchronous processing completes. And to get that completable future out of the stream, we use our find first or else idiom that you've seen a number of times before, where we're going to get the completable future. And if something really horrible goes wrong, we return zero, but that really shouldn't happen unless other things happen that go wrong. So basically, this is going to end up returning a completable future that has the total at that level. And what I keep saying at that level, it's at that depth. And when we start talking about other parts of this code, you'll see why the depth 
is very important. And you'll see how we can have a really cool recursive structure to our code that simplifies the way in which subsequent processing works because we can reuse existing methods like count images async. So that wraps up the first part of the discussion where we're focusing on the overall class structure, talking about some of the fields, talking about the constructor, and talking about the count image async method.